I've just done something that terrifies me wildly beyond anything you could imagine. And that is solo traveling within Korea. I have just arrived at Gyeongju Station, or rather Shin Gyeongju Yok. I'm terrified. I have never tried solo traveling within Korea before. As a matter of fact, like I only really solo travel when I go back and forth from Denmark and Korea. And this is more scary than that, I'm telling you. Not that traveling in Korea is anything difficult. It's not at all difficult. It's actually really convenient with KTX. So I just took the train from Seoul to Gyeongju. It's more like my mental thing to get over, to be honest. I don't know about you, but I've always traveled with friends. And I feel like if you don't travel with friends you haven't really experienced it because you have no one to share it with but then again I realized you know what I have you of course I'm experiencing things just because I'm alone that's what this trip is me practicing that so actually I have Korean tourism organization to thank for teaching me that because this video is sponsored by them just like last video I'm here to show you around the city I'm here to show you some cool cafes some cool cute places to eat and just in general how to travel to Gyeongju so first stop is within Sin Gyeongju station which is a spot called Tim Keri or luggage carrier it's basically a little convenient thing that I booked yesterday. You don't have to book it, but you can book it online before so you're sure there's a spot for you. It's very convenient online, they have English services as well. And then you book it and you give them the information of the size of your bag and then you can drop the bag off at this spot. And then they'll carry it to your accommodation so you can head straight out into the city and explore. It's so convenient and I'm so glad I don't have to wait until 4 p.m. to get rid of my bag where my hotel check-in time is. So I highly recommend you to take advantage of that service if you come to Gyeongju. Now let's go find the Jim Kelly spot. I haven't seen it yet, so let's go see. Okay, all done. Now I only have my little side bag here. That was only 10,000 won. So cheap. And it's being delivered around 6 p.m. tonight. Perfect. Now let's head into town and have some food. I'm starving. dinner was so good. Well, lunch, I guess. As I said, it's my first time in Gyeongju and I've never seen this many Hanuks in one area before. But I did hear that like Gyeongju is one of the most like historical hubs of all of Korea, so it makes sense that it's still like so Hanuki, if you remember what I mean. I actually had a conversation with the taxi driver on the way here. I'm actually kind of proud of myself for understanding him. And I told Jake and he made fun of me because he's like, well, the Gyeongju accent is not that strong, but to me, it's strong and it was a little bit hard to understand at times but he ended up telling me a lot of information about Gyeongju actually one of them being that it was the capital of the Silla dynasty that at one point actually had around two-thirds of all of Korea which is quite impressive I didn't know that I've moved down to Hangidangil. It's a little bit loud here because all of the music is playing from every single side, but the taxi driver told me that this is where things are happening, basically. There are so many cafes and it's kind of like a old meets new hub. Cheers. I walked into the first and the best cafe on the street that I saw. But there are so many to choose from, guys. Gyeongju is really impressing me, seriously. Everything here is beautiful. So many hanoks and there's these murals on a lot of the houses that just makes it really interesting and fun to walk around here. The tourism organization has asked me to check out a couple of specific stores. They look really cute. I've had a little sneak peek online, so let's go and see if we can find them and buy some cute souvenirs. When I used to hear the word souvenir, I didn't use to picture pretty little meaningful objects. That's changed while I've been here in Korea. The things you can get are so adorable. I love that a lot of these items are subtle souvenirs, meaning they're beautiful and so cute, so you can be reminded of your trip in a cozy way, not by wearing an oversized t-shirt that says, I love Korea. <laughs> 
This shop is at the entrance of Hwangdirangil and I absolutely recommend you to take your time walking down this booming street filled with cafes, shops and modernized Hanok buildings. Don't forget the side streets though, I found Zero Space there, which is also a stationary and miscellaneous store with a branch in Mangwandong, in Seoul as well. However, this branch has a lot of items that you usually don't find in Mangwon, and I ended up buying this little cute pin that'll remind me of taking deep breaths and appreciate where I am in life at the moment. I'm telling you, I think I could spend several days around Hwangdirangil if I had the time to. I couldn't hold back, there were so many cute things. Tell me why everything was family themed. I actually got a little bit emotional. I got a little card with a family on it just to like manifest and also it makes me feel really good, I don't know, to buy it. Am I torturing myself? But seriously, it's because Jake, he's in the hospital right now getting his fertility checked and it's making me a little bit nervous to be honest. I have to... So I thought he was already done and then when he didn't call me when he was done because he's getting the result immediately after so when he hadn't called me over the past 30 minutes I actually I started getting a little bit worried because if he didn't call me that means it's not good right but he just texted me he arrived late so that sort of put my heart at ease again I don't know why it's this thing we're just crossing fingers that everything is okay and looking good let's continue to explore this city I, I can't get hung up on my family obsession I got myself a hot dog. I couldn't help myself. It's not even cold today. I usually eat this when it's kind of half cold. I was just craving. Oh my god. It is filled with honey to the rim. Look at this. that this is why I've never really gone out and done solo traveling because it's Friday evening and I'm sitting here in my hotel room and it's it's 8 I mean not that I usually go out these days I don't actually I do like to sit and read at home but I think if I at least had friends or if I had Jake here I think would be walking around the neighborhood looking at stuff or we were having a drink which I wouldn't be doing regardless because I am sober this January. <laughs> Dry January, yay for my New Year's resolutions. Actually it's going fine. It's not hard at all. I mean anyways but that's what we're doing. We're gonna read book and we're gonna eat a bit of food. I didn't go get dinner. I, I was just not hungry and it's eight and I'm still not hungry and I was like, well, what am I then gonna do? I need some food in my system. So I went to the convenience store and I bought eggs and then I bought Pringles and then I bought seaweed snacks <laughs> and I bought protein drink. Not a very healthy dinner, but you know what? I was craving and it's Friday, so cheers. This is actually such a cute hotel room for one person, even two, I mean, honestly. That's really cool and it was really cheap, so I recommend this place if you're coming to Gyeongju. I was just about to say Gwangju. Seriously, I was this close to booking train tickets to Gwangju when I was booking the KTX a couple of days ago. Gwangju and Gyeongju are two very different cities in Korea. And I know that, but my brain did not register that. Thank God I arrived. I'm watching uh, the Korean movie Alienoid. I just saw an ad for it because part two is coming out soon. And I saw an ad for it in at the train station, I think actually today. And I thought, huh, that looks really good because there's this one actress that I really like since watching Mr. Sunshine. I have no idea who, what her name is. I'm not very familiar with um, Korean celebrities. So I thought I wanted to watch the movie while eating my eggs. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> okay, okay, I do know this actor. <laughs> Oh, love him. Good morning, Kyungju. Oh, I feel like I'm stepping out into like a fantasy world because the sun is shining and the sky is so nice and blue and I feel like it's gonna be a good day. Oh, I love waking up feeling like this. Compared to yesterday where we were more into like the hip young area, today I want to visit some of the touristy attractions here. But obviously that doesn't mean that we're not gonna go to any cafes. So um, I actually got a recommendation from Carrie who is the solo traveling queen <laughs> and she recommended me this specific cafe that has a bookstore on top and I looked up the cafe and it actually looks quite Danish. I do believe they had a Dutch flag on the website, but honestly, it looked Danish to me and it's called Tak, which means thank you in Danish. So, okay, here it is. Let's go in. I was wondering why it is that solo traveling scares me because I would consider myself as a generally speaking confident and extroverted person. However, the idea of traveling around solo is still a scary concept to me. I guess it could be because I'm actually scared of getting lost and never finding my way back, even though that'll never happen since I have Wi-Fi, but when you're with someone, you can't really get lost because you always know where each other are, if that makes sense, because you're next to each other. I'm also the person in my friend group who usually takes charge my friends all call me the mom of the group because I naturally just like to have things under control. So it kind of weirds me out that I'm scared of traveling solo. Do you feel the same way? Why or why not? Let's have a chat in the comments because I really need to figure this out. Those cafes were top notch of anything that I've ever tried in Korea and that says a lot because Korea has a cafe game that goes like out of this world. Korea's cafe game is on its own scale for sure. Now I've just like, I was walking to the tombs but I stumbled upon this space. I'm the only one here. Um, it's called Gyeongju Munhawon. It translates to Gyeongju culture space or something like that if I'm correct. And I just read on the sign that these are old government buildings back in the day. They presume that they've been built way before the 18th, 18th hundred, but they aren't exactly sure. This is very impressive. I mean, Korean architecture is just <sighs> drop it gorgeous. And as I say, like, I'm still so surprised of how many buildings with the hanok roof there is here. It's just, it's not only these very old traditional buildings that's been preserved, it's also modern buildings that they've just slammed a hanok roof on and it just looks incredible and it's just this city is very quickly becoming one of my favorite in korea <sighs> These hills that you see behind me is one of the most classic signs that you can see in Gyeongju. That's why like at the tourist shops and at like a lot of the times where you see like sort of a, a logo of Gyeongju, it's like three little green dumps. These are covered in grass. They're very green in the summer. I've seen pictures of, but unfortunately I haven't been able to experience it, but they look really cute in this like orange brown as well. It's, it's giving fall fantasy, but it's actually tombs. Some of these tiny hills are tombs of kings of the previous Shilla dynasty. It's a really impressive watch. They're really tall. It doesn't look like that right now, but that thing is really tall. Look how the shadow is reflected on the hill here. I can't imagine what this is going to look like in the summer with leaves on the trees and with green grass on the hills. But to be honest, right now where you can see all of the reflections of the <laughs> sticks on the, on the grass, this is art. Nature is the greatest artist of them all. This is really pretty. 
pretty. I'm getting a little bit emotional. I think I'm just realizing how happy I am, to be honest. It's not... I'm not sad emotional, I'm really happy. It's just really beautiful here and this place kind of, it just being here makes me really appreciative of my life and it makes me reminded how happy I am and how lucky I feel to, to do this and to sit here in general. And then also there are so many little tiny kids running around and like just playing and it's so beautiful to witness all of these really happy families and Jake called me yesterday evening and said that he got his test results and he was very healthy and top 5% <laughs> of yeah fertility related health and it made me really happy that I had to go home and have a little happy cry it's just a big relief and I just I feel really blessed and happy to be here. That's all I wanted to say. I just needed to sit down for a moment to take it in. Okay, I get it now. I get why solo traveling is so powerful. <laughs> Let's go find a cute place to sit. If Jake had gone with me on this trip, or a friend for that sake, there wouldn't be many opportunities for solitude. I think I'm slowly realizing that spending time with myself outside of my usual comfort zone allows me to really tune into my feelings, desires and emotions, because I don't fall into my usual daily habits out here. Just sitting here, far away from everything I know, is scary, but somehow there's power in that. It's kind of like life's whispering, you know what Cecil, life really just is, and you'll always end up exactly where you're supposed to, if you just get up and take that first step into wherever. And I think I'll figure it out. I kind of like this. I have finished eating some food and now I'm heading towards a bakery that I've been recommended by the tourism organization and it's a bakery that specifically sells all of the bread that are very famous for Gyeongju, like barley bread, Gyeongju bread and other things as well. So I really want to go and see, you know, I like my bakeries. <laughs> this is Cheomsongdae and it's the oldest astronomical observatory in Asia. What? That's so cool. found this bakery that's apparently really really famous among the locals especially it's called Huangnambang basically means Huangnam bread um, they have these pamphlets that describe what it is and how you eat it and they have it in English too so it says it's nice to have with cold milk or hot tea and it was originated in 1939 and since then it's just been really popular here it's red bean Handmade from start to finish. I got 
five and they're still hot in here. Oh my god. These are so pretty. Oh my god. This is so good. The bread is almost like a mix between waffle and bread. And then it's filled to the rim with red bean paste. It's so good. I think I'm gonna have to have one more. Do you want some too, kitty cat? No? I'm gonna head back to the hotel and grab my suitcase. Put on some sweatpants because I've been wearing nothing on my legs and I'm freezing. It's a bad decision. And then I'm going to jump to the train station and drive back to Seoul to Jake tonight. Oh, this is definitely not the last time I'm coming here. What a beautiful city. Location tags are down below in the description box. So if you ever come here, highly recommend you to take the route that I did. Probably planned it a bit better because I walked a lot, but this is a very walkable city. It's great. Yeah, and check them out because I think I, I did pretty well, like curating a good like to see list. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next week again. Bye.